Hey guys, it's Nikki from Plant Parenthood. Today we're going to be uh, working on my Monstera uh, Delicioso. Uh, today it has mealybugs and it's had mealybugs for quite a while. I've kept on top of it, um, but I just can't seem to get rid of them and eradicate them. So now I'm going to have to take care of the mealybugs. We're going to do it with rubbing alcohol and a microfiber towel. Um, and I'm going to change the soil. Uh, take it outside, rinse it really well after I kill everything with alcohol. I'm going to take it to an area where I don't have plants um, and spray it off. You could use your shower if you wanted to. Um, despite having some mealybug issues, I've had one, two, three new leaves pop out. So the mealybugs are under control, but they're still there. I can't seem to get rid of them, so I know that they're reproducing in the soil. So I'm going to have to repot this entire plant. I'm probably going to also get a, a different planter uh, and disinfect this planter, or I may throw it out um, altogether. It's like 100, 708 degrees here in Austin. So I think I can disinfect it with some bleach, uh, like a diluted bleach solution, put it outside, let it bake in the sun, um, like on my driveway not near other plants and let it get really hot for a couple of days and then I think I'll be okay. But it is terracotta so I'm always kind of worried about that. Um, one thing that I've tried and it really hasn't worked as well on this plant is this Bonide uh, systemic uh, granule. This isn't a sponsored video. I'm not that big yet to be sponsored by anyone. But I do have a lot of luck with this. Um, I do not use it on my outside plants because it also kills pollinators, um, especially flowering plants. So if you use this from my recommendation, because it does, if you stay on top of it and you do it the way that you're supposed to do it, it will take care of almost any pest you have. Aphids, mealybugs, thrips, it'll take care of it. But I want us to all solemnly swear <laughs> that we do not use this outside. We don't use it outside. We don't use it on flowering plants where pollinators will feed off of because it will kill the pollinators and I'm very passionate about that. So any plant that I've treated systemically, it doesn't go outside until I'm sure that that systemic is out of the system, um, especially if it's going to flower. So just that's how it goes. Now in the winter when I bring my plants into my garage, all my propagations, I get aphids um, because I have a lot of Hoya. And Hoya are related to milkweed, and they attract aphids. When they are outside in my garden, I don't ever have a problem, hardly ever have a problem with insects. Outside, it's only when I bring them inside, and there's no beneficial predatory other bugs to eat them. Um, in my yard, I have crepe myrtles that attract um, aphids. Um, if you've ever sat under a crepe myrtle tree and have felt the crying of the tree, the sap dropping off, that's actually aphids. Um, that is causing that sap to fall. So I like having crepe myrtles in my yard because they attract the aphids away from my plants and they also attract aphids to my yard. So I always populate my yard with lacewings. I don't bring in uh, ladybugs. There's been some talk about bringing in ladybugs, buying ladybugs to do your pest control and that can actually be kind of a really dicey uh, situation because they can actually bring aphids with them is what I understand. I may have this wrong. Check me if I'm not wrong, but we, low battery. And so the problem with bringing in ladybugs is you might get the wrong one. You might get the wrong ladybug that's, that either isn't going to do what it's going to do, or it's going to bring more harm to your yard. In lace wings, they eat way more in their daily, whatever you call it, bugs. Than ladybugs ever do and they are super predatory and they are fast um, i can wipe out my aphids with lacewing only in my garage in about two weeks um, when the aphids run out the lacewings are cannibalistic and they will eat each other so i don't you know it's an insect world but i don't worry that i'm starving them to death they will eventually die um, anyway and then they eat each other if there's nothing to eat. So I buy the eggs. The larvae are a little bit more expensive. Um, you can do that. You'll have a better success rate of hatching 
uh, if you do the larva and you can use them inside. I know there's people that use them inside and they'll eat things like mealy bugs. They'll eat things like aphids, spider mites, I think. I'm not sure about spider mites. There are good mites, like beneficial mites that'll take care of spider mites. But I just like to go with manual removal inside because I've also heard that lace wings can bite people. Um, nobody wants that. Nobody wants to be sleeping and getting bit by lace wings. Plus my son, he just has this thing about bugs and he's terrified of them. So I don't bring bugs in if I don't have to. So today we're going to do a manual um, removal of every visible uh, mealy bug that I can see. I'll show y'all clips of what I'm dealing with. They love to hide in the nooks and crannies and on the stems of um, the plants. You might be able to kind of see them there, but I'll get some close up so you see what they look like. Really, I've heard just great advice that if you find bugs on your plants and you're not sure if they're harming your plants or if they're beneficial or they're benign, like they don't do anything to your plants, bugs that move slowly, relatively slowly, are bad. Bugs that move fast are typically good or indifferent. So, and I think that's a really good um, thing to think of, but there's lots of people on Facebook that can help identify mealybugs. Mealybugs just look like a bunch of cotton has fallen onto your plants. So let's get to it. Enough said, right? I'm going to show you all some pictures before I get started, some videos of what I'm trying to tackle. Then I'm going to unpot this. Let me lean this over. I'm going to unpot it from this pot and I'm going to do brand new soil. And I'm going to throw this soil directly into the trash because it is contaminated and I'm not going to reuse it. I'm not dare going to reuse it. Um, and I need to wipe out the mealy bugs in here because I bring plants in the winter. So I need to make sure that for at least a month or two, hope, really honestly, three or four months, I don't have mealy bug issues before I bring my collection in. This is where I keep my anthurium and my philodendron in the winter. All right, let's get started. Hi guys, I'm going to show you what mealy bugs um, look like. You got to really look for them. So you see these white things right here. Those are mealy bugs. They love to pick hiding spots like under the leaf. There are mealy bugs. See, they don't, they don't move. You can't really see them move. And they, when they do move, they move really slowly. And this whole underside of this leaf is covered in mealy bugs. Despite the fact that I've tried to treat this plant over and over, they love new leaves because they're easier to eat. So I've got mealy bugs here, mealy bugs right there. They also like to hide. They don't like light. Light is definitely a deterrent for them. So they like the shady spots. Here's another one. Um, I don't see. There may be a spot or two uh, on this leaf. Like there's one right there or right there. Um, the very tip of that plant. Oops. I don't know if y'all can see that. Looking underneath. I mean, I really just, there's one right there. You've got to really look really hard for these dudes. Um, I also look really closely at the new growth. So I'm looking here. And you sometimes you need a bright light. See in here, see, there's one spot that if you just kind of look at your leaf like that, you don't see it. But if you get in close, there it is. And if you leave one, chances are they're going to come back. So I don't see on this side. I'm going to turn my plant around. See, there's mealies here. This is a relatively new leaf. There's a mealy there. They also like to hide in the stems. So there's a mealy. You just have to see the mealies in here. Oops, I don't know if y'all can see that very well. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but they're in the crotch of these plants too. Um, here's my newest leaf. Um, I don't see, oh, I think that might be one. Yeah. And then they sometimes are on the stem. You see them on the stem there. And I had a philodendron that I brought in that had them kind of all over them and they were touching this plant and that's what happens. That's how they get them. 
The thing to consider with mealybugs, well, and plants in general, is if you have enough plants and you do it for enough time, you will get pests. It just comes along with the hobby. Um, you never want to really freak out about it. Uh, it's it's easy to freak about uh, freak out about it because you're like, oh my god, they're gonna eat my plants, they're gonna kill my plants, and they will um, if left untreated. But most of the time, if you're catching them early and you're trying to get them under control, they may damage part of your plant, but they're probably not gonna kill it unless it's a very young plant or you've let it go way too far. Uh, when you're watering and when you're um, walking through and checking on your plants, you do want to check occasionally for pests and see if you have a problem. Because the sooner you catch it, the faster and the easier you'll be able to get rid of the bugs and uh, save your plant. Because they will take over and not only will they affect one plant, they can easily move to other plants. They can do that by touching they can do that by, if I touch mealybugs and get them on my hands and I go and I touch another plant, it can happen that way. It can also happen with tools, which is why I think you've seen in almost every video that I've done that I'm using clippers or scissors or any piece of equipment that I'm using to trim my plants. I disinfect between plants even if they have no signs of pests because if a plant has a pest that I can't see, because they do lay eggs, they do have larval stages, all that stuff, if I use a piece of equipment on a plant clippers or whatever and i tram and i go and trim another plant with that trimmer i can introduce pests in that way too so you just want to be really careful and prevent bug problems if you can all right i'm going to go ahead and get started cleaning on these i'll show you how i'm cleaning them i use a uh, microfiber towel they're real soft towels um, and I go with the grain of the plant and then I can also use my finger and get into the little cracks um, where I might see uh, bugs. But the trick is, is you want to use at least 70% uh, alcohol um, and you're trying to wipe it off. You're letting it kind of soak and then you want to wipe it off. And then I'm really dousing this plant and I don't want to dry it out because of the alcohol. So I'm immediately going to wash it off with water. So, all right. Let's do it. I have my plant alcohol um, and I'm going to start. I think this was the leaf that was the worst. I'm going to see if I can get a better view on it. Hold on just one second. I'm going to try to get a better shot of it for you. Okay. All right. We're going to treat this leaf first. Remember, this is the leaf that um, we saw the most mealybugs on. And you definitely want to keep track of which plant you've treated. So we're going to treat this one because, um, as you can see, it's got lots of little mealy bugs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the top of the plant, and I'm going to spray it down. I'm going to get in the, the crook of it. And then these monsteras have this tube, kind of, where they stemmed out. And I go all the way down, and I start spraying the crotch of the, of the plant down here and get it really soaking wet, okay? And then on the back side, I do the same thing and I really just douse it. And then I'm gonna leave it just for a little bit and then I move on to the ne next leaf. Even if I don't see mealies, I know this plant has mealies and so I need to treat the entire plant. So. I'm going to go ahead and spray this plant down and then I'll show you how to wipe it off. Okay. As, okay, so as I'm going and spraying everything with alcohol, I have this very fresh, very, very new leaf. It's come out within the last week. I don't see evidence of mealies. If I spray this new plant that hasn't, this new leaf that hasn't hardened off, I'm probably gonna damage it. So for now, I'm not going to spray it. I will come back once it's hardened and spray it again just to be sure. But it is still very brand new and I'm gonna dry it out with this alcohol and I'm gonna lose this really gorgeous big leaf. It's risky because it could have mealybugs on it. I don't see evidence of mealybugs on it. If I see mealybugs, oh, that might be one. If I see them, I'll probably do them individually but not soak the plant. And I'll just keep an eye on this leaf for the next, you know, 
week or two um, and just look for mealybugs every day and kill the mealybugs as I see them. Um, ideally, it's best to treat these plants this way when they don't have new leaves, but I really don't have a choice. I've got to get in here and do it. So, all right, I'm going to continue on. All right, so I have sprayed the entire plant down, and I'm going to come back to the leaf that I sprayed first that had the most mealybugs on it, and I'm going to put my hand to support the leaf underneath, and I'm going to just rub Focusing on the middle line of the plant, that's where they like to hide, and I'm just washing or drying <laughs> off all the alcohol with just a dry, clean microfiber towel. I'm just going to take all the individual leaves at the top, do it very systemic, and just check and make sure I've gotten it all. I'm going to come back here to the to where the leaf meets the stem and I'm going to dry the stem off as well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently turn this leaf over and I'm going to do the back side. You can't do it um, like this at first to kind of get started, especially on these big leaves. These big leaves kind of, you just, you want to use a lot of care. It's real easy to get tired of doing it, and you'll want to start rushing on it, and that's when I typically break a leaf. That's when I do that. So now I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to look if there's any spots that I missed and get all those mealy bugs off, and I'm going to get underneath the leaf where it meets the stem here and do it that way. So... I'm going to, now any mealy bug that's on here in theory has been killed by the alcohol. So I can use this rag on multiple leaves, um, but I will throw this immediately into the washer. Uh, you can't wash these in hot water, it damages the fiber, but I go ahead and use uh, the right soap for them, the right setting and wash them. So I'm, so I'm certain that I won't use this towel and touch another plant. It's contaminated. Let's be real. It's contaminated. So we have to be really careful with it. All right. I'm going to continue to do this and then we'll go to the unpotting, repotting and washing. Okay. So apparently my microphone quit working during uh, this part of the video. So I'm just going to explain what I'm doing here, but I'm talking about how I'm going to go around to all the leaves and uh, wipe off the mealy bugs. Uh, this brand new leaf that I'm pointing out here, I didn't spray, but I just wiped it down. So I just was going around the plant. I was trying to find every little part of the plant that needed to be wiped down except for this new leaf. And I just used my rag and wiped it down that had some alcohol on it. You'll see later in the video that I take this plant outside and I spray it with water. Um, so I was going to manually remove most of them anyway. I'm also talking now again about the bonide granules and I realized that I didn't explain how to use them. You actually sprinkle them onto the top of the soil uh, that's in your plant. You don't put it on the leaves. So I just wanted to make sure that I cleared that up and that y'all knew how to use those granules. Again, my microphone wasn't working through this, but I'm showing now how I did all the leaves and uh, that I started to wipe down the stems um, as well. Uh, all through the plant. So just more of the same thing of treating all the leaves. And then I'm talking about how the mealybugs are living inside of that moss pole. So the moss pole has to go as well. And the bamboo stakes have to also uh, be ditched because as you see, as I'm lifting up this twine, there are mealybugs in the twine and underneath the twine they just really like dark places where there's no light so i start here by cutting the twine off um, and just checking the mealybugs because i'm going to have to remove this uh, bamboo pole 
uh, because again, it's contaminated, so it has to go. I'm working my way around the plant, showing you where I'm going to have to detach it from. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, dog in the background. Uh, I cut the rest of the twine off, again, to remove the plant from the poles, because I have to. Uh, and then I'm showing you where those aerial roots have grabbed onto the moss pole as well. And I'm going to treat them like I did the leaves to make sure that I also get rid of the uh, mealy bugs. Okay, so I have successfully uprooted the Monstera. I'm gonna take it outside and wash it down with a water hose. I have this pot, it's empty. I'm going to leave it right here for now. I'm gonna deal with the plant first and then come back, not bring the plant in until I disinfect the area. I'm not bringing this plant in. In fact, I'm probably gonna leave it like this overnight because these plants can take it. That's what I'm gonna do, just to make sure that I disinfect this area really well, because you'll see there's soil, there's pieces everywhere, and I need to be really sure that I'm not reintroducing a problem. Um, all of the soil is in this bag and contained. I'm gonna take that to the dumpster right now. All right. All right, so you see that I'm spraying all the roots, just water hose in my thumb. These plants can take kind of a rough spray. I'm going to be a little more careful with this leaf here because it's my new one. And my driveway is not hot. I checked it, so don't do this if your driveway is really hot. I'm going to get in between all the nooks and crannies. I'm going to turn it over. Monsters are pretty Monstera de deliciosos, which is what this is, are pretty hardy with being kind of flipped over and kind of manhandled a little bit. And this one I already sprayed, so I'm not too worried that it's touching the grass. All right. I have picked this one up and I've done it, and I'm feeling good about this one. Get it get in here. Make sure I've got all of this in here. I have sprayed it down lightly. It is dried. I just used alcohol and I actually made the decision, executive decision today. I'm not going to put plants. It is uh, mid-July here. I'm not going to put that plant back here because I need this to be mealy bug free, pest free come about late October. So when I bring all my plants in, I know for a fact that I am mealy bug free. So I've decided I'm letting it dry overnight inside in my kitchen where I have tile floor, the Monstera. And tomorrow I'm going to pot it up and I'm going to go ahead and take it outside because I'm confident now with new soil and how much effort that I put into getting those leaves, not only alcoholed, but also washed off that they're going to be relatively, if not completely, mealy bug free. And whatever I might have missed, I am confident that my lace wings will find and they'll take care of it. So I changed my mind. This plant isn't coming back in here. It's gonna stay outside where I have helpers <laughs> making sure that I don't have pests. Um, I am going to go ahead and take my scissors and I'm going to spray them. Lay them down and I'm going to let those soak. And I'm also, since I have touched this bottle, I'm going to spray some in my hand and I'm just going to go over the bottle. It's probably overkill, but when it comes to bugs and plants, I don't think there's really a lot of overkill that doesn't make sense. So, um, now, my hands are going to be completely trashed. It's probably a good idea to wear gloves. I never wear gloves when I'm doing houseplant stuff. I don't, I like to feel dirt. I like to feel what I'm doing. If you're immunocompromised, you never want to do that. You want to wear gloves, but I have a cross my fingers, healthy immune system. And I actually feel like I get benefits from touching soil and getting my hands dirty, mental benefits. So I go ahead and I do everything without gloves, but it's not always recommended because there is, there are pathogens in soil that if your immune system is compromised, you can get things like hookworms and all sorts of weird stuff. So just be careful, make decisions that are good for you. But for me, I go barehanded. Uh, I understand the risk, I accept them. Um, 
I'm going to also spray this because I was holding it. So anything I would touch, I literally should spray down. Um, I even had some alcohol ball, uh, bottle, even though it is alcohol, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I am just gonna go ahead and refill it. All right, and then this is gonna go straight into the laundry, straight into the washing machine, so I'm sure not to have any problems. And I took the pot outside, I rinsed it off, but I'm gonna leave it outside and let, I'm gonna, sorry, phone going off. I'm gonna leave it, I'm multitasking. This isn't my full-time job, as it turns out. Um, I am going to bleach that pot tomorrow and I'm gonna leave it out in the 110 degree sun for a few days and I think we'll be all right. So, all right, uh, stay tuned for tomorrow when I repot and I get it all together and hopefully it'll be really pretty. Thank you.